Ring. It's the Japanese horror classic that made people afraid to watch video cassettes. In fact, I haven't seen anyone use one of those for a while. The film is based on the 1991 novel of the same name by Suzuki Koji, which is in turn based on a Japanese folk story called Bancho Sarayashiki. Let's dive straight into the mythology. Big spoilers ahead. You have been warned. There once was a woman called Shizuku Yamamura who had psychic abilities. She demonstrated her abilities at a public event organised by Dr. Ikuma. These two were having an affair. It was a complex family situation, with Shizuku's brother trying to make money off her abilities. Shizuku and Dr. Ikuma had a young daughter called Sadako. In the book, Dr. Ikuma is the biological father. In the films, that's not entirely clear. It suggested that Sadako was fathered by a supernatural ocean being, a virgin birth of sorts. One day, a journalist decided to denounce Shizuko's abilities, and Sadako psychically killed that journalist. The murder was brought to the attention of Shizuko and Dr. Ikuma through a vision. Dr. Ikuma threw Sadako into a well and put a lid on top. But Sadako survived the fall, and presumably died of hunger down there. In her last moments, her rage was projected into the airwaves to one day become immortalised on a videotape. And now, for the contemporary characters in the film, the videotape carries a curse. If you watch it, your phone will ring with an ominous phone call, and you will be dead in exactly seven days. The only way to survive is to copy the tape and show it to someone else. That transfers the curse onto them. And in order for them to survive, they will need to copy the tape and show it to another person. On and on it goes. You can either continue to perpetuate Sadako's rage and the tragedy of her family, or you can die. It takes the central characters a while to puzzle this out. They are the journalist Reiko and her psychic ex-husband Ryuji. As they begin to uncover the tragic events which culminated with the cursed videotape, they form a plan. Sadako died in rage. They need to find her dead body and somehow put her to rest. There's a ticking clock because Reiko has seen the videotape. She has seven days to live. After much exploring and getting pretty close to Reiko's deadline, they locate the well and Reiko nurses the corpse of Sadako like a mother holding a child. Reiko survives past her deadline, leading her to believe that the curse has been broken. But sadly not, the curse hasn't been broken. In a terrifying scene, Sadako's spirit emerges from the TV screen and kills Ryuji. Her eye scares him to death. He dies because the tape had been copied and shown to him, but he hadn't shown it to anyone else. He had not passed on the curse. And to make matters worse, their seven-year-old son, Yoichi, has also seen the tape. The film ends with Reiko driving to her father's house. She wants to show him the tape in order to pass on the curse and save her son. The cycle will continue. So the film is about the resurfacing of trauma from the past. The collapse of the old family feeds the collapse of the new family. On a broader level, the film has been interpreted as an expression of the conflict between Japanese tradition and modern technology. The thing that sticks to the videotape is Sadako's rage. Her rage is what's remembered via modern media. The videotape is a powerful symbol because it's something that you wind and rewind again and again. A cycle. The title of the film, Ring, has multiple possible meanings. It could refer to the ringing of the phone after you've watched the video. It could refer to the cyclical nature of the curse. The videotape itself represents a fascinating cinematic challenge because it has to do the job of visually expressing Sadako's rage. It starts with the view from the well, so what Sadako would have seen when looking up from inside the well. We see her mother, we see a series of Japanese characters talking about the eruption of Mount Mihara that was predicted by Shizuko. The layers of meaning within this film, the, the video is representing the rage of Sadako, and Sadako is reflecting the rage of creation itself, volcanoes erupting. 
Another key image in the video, a mysterious man wearing a towel on his head. And if you listen very carefully, the words being said are frolic in brine, goblins be thine, in the dialect of Oshima. So it's a quote from Oshima Island, which is where Sadako lived and where the active volcano Mount Mahara which we heard about earlier, that's where that volcano is. You see how all these elements are coming together. What does that phrase mean, for frolic in brine, goblins be thine? It's almost like a proverb, a saying. It's kind of like you reap what you sow. If you frolic in brine, you're going to have to deal with goblins. That's what happens with the videotape, isn't it? If you unearth this tragedy, this rage, you will be cursed. And then we see an I with the word Sada in reverse. And Sada is obviously the first part of Sadako's name. And it means chastity. And then, of course, we end with the image of the well, the well that Sadako was thrown into. And the well kind of acts as a, a boiling pot for Sadako's rage. She was thrown into that well and the lid was put on top and she was left there to boil in her own rage. The videotape is akin to the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden. We're screaming at the characters, don't watch that video. Just as we're screaming at Adam and Eve, don't eat that fruit. But what are humans like? We do it anyway. We have a remarkable tendency to press the self-destruct button. And that's what happens in the film. Some of the characters are ignorant of the videotape's devastating consequences, while others are warned and decide to watch anyway. Teenagers dare one another to watch it. You don't want to be a scaredy cat, do you? It's just a videotape. This is a recurring theme in horror films. Performing a ritual as simple as watching a videotape can summon something terrifying. When I was at school, there was an urban legend going round that if you say Bloody Mary three times in front of a mirror, she'll appear and stab you in the back. I never tried it, and I never will. These stories are incredibly common and they reflect the dynamic of Genesis 3, the temptation to take the forbidden fruit, pretending that nothing bad will actually happen. It's interesting to compare the tragedy of Sadako with the story of Joseph, which you can find later on in the book of Genesis. Like Sadako, Joseph had a gift of prophecy. He had dreams that told him about the future, and they came from God. His brothers were jealous of him, and like Dr. Ikuma, they threw him into a well. But then his brothers took him out of the well and sold him as a slave to Egypt, and God was with him. Joseph became Pharaoh's right-hand man, and instead of taking revenge on his brothers, which is what we might expect him to do, he forgave them. His rage did not continue to burn. The curse was absorbed. And on a more cosmic level, we live under a curse. We are born into this world in such a way that no matter what we do, one day we will die. Most of us have more than seven days, thankfully. But all of us have a time limit. A limited number of heartbeats. A limited number of breaths. Death came into the world because of Adam and Eve's rebellion against God. It's the curse that we have inherited from them and it's the curse that we continue to pass on to our children. We need someone who can absorb the curse, someone who can be Joseph to us. And that's what Jesus came to do. You know, the rage of Sadako, it's understandable. She killed a man, but Dr. Ikuma throws her down the well. He despises her, he, he wants nothing to do with her. But it's just the most tragic and heartbreaking thing, this family situation. The Ring films are crying out for the curse of death to be lifted. And so are we. My name's Thomas, and I talk about the symbolism of horror films from a Christian perspective. Do subscribe if you'd like to stay in the loop. I'm currently working through Rolling Stone magazine's top 10 horror films. And that was at number 3, Ring. Join me next time when we will be looking at Psycho.